Rockefeller China story is America's China story. The first three John D. Rockefellers were engaged with China from the time of the American Civil War. The late David Rockefeller, who was responsible for merging his Chase Manhattan with J.P. Morgan Bank, and who ardently pushed for systematically interlocking trade and political relations between the West and China for decades, presciently discussed China's sense of collective discipline, acute achievements, and future potential. His wasn't merely academic observations, but tactical and strategic ones. Wall Street and China, a long, intimate relationship. The history of Wall Street and Anglo-American finance in China is one that is rarely discussed in Western media or even in academia, whereas knowing it would explain much about both China's stunning economic rise over the past 70 years, as well as certainly seemingly rising tensions between China and the United States today. It's hard to tell if there's genuine tension and enmity because of credible rivalry status between the U.S. and China, or if everything is a proceeding according to wider, deeper, much longer-term planning based on desired, durable, and thus political coordination. Large U.S., U.K., and E.U. investment banks are new entrants into China's nascent bond sector, yet also retain long-standing presences pertaining to China's financial and economic development. Such factors should be weighed alongside other historical details in evaluating China's recent threats to, quote, dump U.S. Treasury bonds, end quote, as well as to ultimately view any sense of symbiosis which the U.S. and China are serving and why. Are banks such as J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Standard Chartered, BNP Paribas, Deutsche Bank, and others necessarily against a quote-unquote bond run and wider trashing of U.S. debt, or not so much? Who benefits? More specifically, who profits? Yet, given that ornate history, what accounts for the existing and growing animosities between Washington and Beijing? Is there a genuine sense of rivalry or enmity or is there rather a perennial partnership and codependency between the two super economic powers? Are both poles existing concurrently due to the nature of a wider power dialectic? In this episode of Money and Fear, we'll review some monetary and political history involving Wall Street and Beijing in order to weigh the mentioned factors. Details not shared, let alone analyzed, by mainstream corporate business press supposedly reporting on U.S.-China trade, tariffs, and or currency wars even. If you're not a NewsBud member yet, please join and tell others. It costs practically nothing, yet gives you information you're not supposed to know, thus empowering you to stay ahead of the herd and think like the establishment planners think. Mm -hmm.